start. Oh, oh God. Why do I do these kinds of things on camera? Let's just get started, you know what? A prime of X, you know the problem already. Look up at the board, idiot. Prime of X limit is eight approach to zero is sine of X plus eight. No, no, no. Minus sine of X. No, no, no. Over eight. No, no, oh wait, that one's expected. So, how could we do this? Well, it's actually quite, 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 quite simple. So, first thing you would want to do is use the fact that sine of x plus h can actually be split into sine of x cosine of h plus sine of h cosine of x. It's a rule. Sine of two angles equals, so like sine of a and B gives you sine of A and cosine of a yellowish black flying animal plus sine of a yellow uh, it's black uh, flying animal cosine A. So this is going to be helpful for us. So now we're going to have the fact. No, 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 no. Oh. I know, it's not funny anymore. The joke's been recycled way too many times. Like, one, two, three, four. Actually, three. But whatever. I'm not a good counter. As they say, there are three types of people in this world. The people who know how to count and the people who don't. So anyway... Let's factor out sine of x. So, you have sine of x cos minus sine of x over 8 plus sine of x cos x, I guess, over 8 bollocks. So, this gives you sin x. Cos minus uno. I'm gonna do negative sine x just for the pleasure of having one minus cos. So, over eight plus sin cos x over eight. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the limit of both of these. That's what we usually do. So, I'm gonna do that. And f prime of x, the limit as h approach zero. Now, what we are going to do is put this negative sine x at the bottom. We're gonna ignore it. Skeleton in our closet. And then one minus cos, I love saying that, over eight. Then you have sinhu cos x over eight as well. Now let's focus on this for a bit. Now let's say we try to take the derivative of this, one minus cos over h. So let's consider it alone for a second, without even negative fruits. So let's multiply by one plus cos over one plus cos. Remember, this is still one, so it doesn't change anything. So this gives us one minus Cos squared h, it's been ruined. <laughs> anyway, cos over h times one plus cos, and must live on somehow. So, how are we going to do this? Well, remember that cosine squared h plus sine squared h, yeah, I'm back to normal, I'm sorry, is equal to one. So, Logically, 1 minus cosine squared h is equal to sine squared h. Deactivating unfunny jokes about trigonometric identities. Alright, that's better. So, that means that this must be sine squared h over h times 1 plus cosine h. So, now what are we going to do? Well, we have this over that 
So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to split up this fraction. So, it gives us so a sinha. Oh, yeah, I deactivated the joke. Sorry. Cut that. Sine of 8 phew, over... So, we'll just have sine of 8 times sine of 8 over 8 times 1 over 1 plus cosine of 8. Remember, but if we multiply all of these fractions, we'll still get this. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 8 here. So that gives us this. So that gives us 8 times sine of 8 over 8 whole squared times 1 over 1 plus cosine of 8. So this will, of course, approach 0 as 8 approaches 0. So that means that this whole thing is going to be set to nothing. So we can completely eliminate this term. So now, what else do we have in store? Well, remember that this is sine x, and this is going to approach 1 as 8 approaches 0. So that gives us, well, we can take this away. So that, so that gives us cosine of x. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next.